Hi, it's Krista again. I'm really excited to be with you today to show you an herbal remedy that will help heal and keep you comfortable with bites and stings. So let me tell you what we're going to do today. We're making a stings and bites salve that you can put on any bites from wasps, bee stings, mosquito bites, even splinters. I take walks in the forest every day, and I swear we're totally attacked by mosquitoes. Every summer I get bee stings and wasp bites, and it's really important to have something that you can put on to relieve itching and to help heal the sting or bite as soon as possible. So today we're going to make this salve, and we're going to do it step by step. There are a few steps to this. The first step that we're going to do is collecting our herbs. We're going to be using plantain, which you can find anywhere. It's kind of an invasive weed, but it's filled with medicine, it's beautiful. And everyone knows this one, chamomile. The main ingredient in this salve is the plantain. Plantain is super amazing at drawing out toxins and helping to heal and moisten wounds. Chamomile is excellent at healing and providing what your body needs to take away any itching as a result of these bites or stings. One thing that you can do when you're out in nature and you don't have anything with you and you get stung by a bee or bitten by a wasp or stung by a mosquito or even stung by nettles is to find plantain. It's very easily identified by its stringy parts in its leaf. You can just take this, wad it up, and put it into your mouth. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Chew, chew, chew. Spit it out. And put it onto whatever your sting, wherever your sting or bite is. Within five minutes, you will see noticeable relief. It is anti-inflammatory, as well as with chamomile in the sap anti-inflammatory. It draws the toxins out of the sting or bite and it takes away the pain. So this is excellent first aid when you're on the go. So for our salve, after you've gathered your herbs, you will dehydrate them and you'll grind them in a grinder or however you would like to grind them. Then you're going to gather or make some oil and you'll infuse that oil with the herbs. You can do that in many different ways. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And after the oil is infused with the herbs, you're going to add to it some beeswax over low heat with maybe some essential oil and make your salve. So we'll get started. So after we've picked our herbs and dried them using whatever method you like, I use an Excalibur dehydrator at home, but I also hang my herbs out in the sun or in, a, in our garage to dry, however you like. We're going to grind them so that they will have as much surface area to interact with the oil, to infuse the oil in a, with a more potent infusion. We'll use today the Sauna 707 to grind. It, I just love the texture that it provides for the herbs. You can even cut them up with scissors or grind them in your hands, however you like, or with a mortar and pestle. So we will do a one part chamomile to three parts plantain oil infusion. So we'll get our herbs together. I'll take my plantain first. So now we'll add one part chamomile. Okay, so now we've got our three parts plantain and our one part chamomile ground and ready to be infused in oil. Now we need to think about what oil we're going to use. Normally, I use what I have at home, usually olive oil. 
You can also use sunflower oil or almond oil, depending on what benefits that you want. Today I wanted to show you how to use sunflower seed oil. We're going to actually make it fresh. Fresh is always best. Sunflower seed oil has a lot of skin benefits that will add to our salve. It has a huge amount of linoleic acid and that will really help your skin. So let's go to making our oil. As you see, I've added to our Sana 707, the oil extractor attachment. I happen to have one of these at home, so we're going to use it today to make fresh sunflower seed oil for our salve. So I finished making the oil, it looks really good, and we're left with this bowl of really yummy sunflower seed kind of curls. We've been eating kind of out of it while we've been making the oil. I recommend this on salads or in your food, whatever you want. Now we're going to infuse our oil with our herbs. So we're going to put on here, in here our dried herbs and the oil. We're using a two to one ratio. So two parts, oil to one part dried herb. I'm just gonna give it a little mix here. Put it into the jar. And then add the oil. So I think that we are good. Maybe I'll add a little bit more herb. Now there's a few ways to infuse this oil. You can do it the old fashioned way, which is the one I prefer, to put it in a sunny window where it will be warm for about six to eight weeks. It takes a while, but that really gets all of the medicinal constituents out of the plant into the oil. Now, if you can't wait six to eight weeks, there are two other methods. One would be on your stove. You can put it into a pot and put it on a medium heat for about an hour. You really need to watch it because if the oil heats up too rapidly or too hot, you could burn it or you could lose some of the medicinal constituents of your plant. Another way, which we use at home, is to put it into a bread maker. We've got a sauna bread maker here. This gets a really low temperature, but a precise temperature. And we did our oil in here overnight. So being able to keep the temperature precise really helps so that you can set it and leave it to its work. Now we did this in olive oil last night. So it's been in the bread maker the entire night. And so this should be ready to make our salve. So we have our infused oil and now we're gonna make the stings and bite salve. So the first thing we need to do is to strain our oil. This one is the one that was sitting in the bread maker all night. This is two or one part, oh, one part oil to one half part herb. That's a beautiful color from that plantain. That plantain gives it a really nice rich green color. That's about as much oil as we need. And we're going to put this into a double boiler, or what I've made is a pot within a pot. There's a small amount of water in there and it will keep the temperature really stable for this oil. So I'm going to just turn it on and put it on a very low temperature. We're going to add then some beeswax. The ratio is four parts oil to one part beeswax. And then we'll wait for this to incorporate. So now we've incorporated all of the beeswax into the oil and we're ready to make our salve. But first I'm gonna put in some essential oils. 
This one is lavender. It has anti-inflammatory, anti-pain, anti-itch constituents and promotes overall healing for the stings and bites. So I'll put in about 20 drops into our mixture. Great, and it smells so excellent. So now we're ready to put it into our canisters or our jars, and then we'll let them cool, and they'll be ready for healing stings and bites. So thanks again for watching. I really hope that this salve helps you and your family to remedy the summertime stings and bites. Use it in good health. Bye.